This is the official totally accurate battle simulator faction tournament with 64 original factions made by you, the Tabs community. I mean, just take a look at this tournament table. Yeah. This is gonna take a while. Now here's how it's gonna work. Each faction will take turns fighting their enemy and the winner will progress to the next round. Then we keep doing this until we reach the final. Now the rules of the tournament will be on screen right now, so feel free to pause the video. And finally, this will be a four part series. And so if you want to see episode two, three and four and to find out who wins the Tabs Faction Tournament, then make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. That's not a suggestion. It's a requirement. If you can help us get to 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, then that would be delicious. <laughs> now before we begin, who do you think is gonna win the Tabs Faction Tournament? Make sure you comment your answer down below, and at the end of this series, I'll come back to the comment section, pick a correct answer, and you will get a Steam Key for Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. Okay, here we go. In Battle 1, we've got the Pictish Faction with their King, Cavalry and Axemen versus the Macedonian faction with their war elephants and shield formations. Okay, let battle number one begin. Are the elephants or the cavalry gonna take the day? Let's okay, those first guys have been absolutely slaughtered and it looks like the answer is going to be the elephants. Will the Pictish or the Macedonians go through? How many of the elephants are still alive? One of them is dead. In fact, this is actually two of them are dead. We might actually have ourselves a battle here. Macedonians appear to be. Wow. The Pictish King down here is about to execute that guy. Okay, then. It looks to me like the... Okay, the Pictish King is now down. Now what we've got is spear throwers versus the Pictish Archers, but these guys have got shields, which basically means they are going to win. And there you go. Only a handful of units left on the battlefield, and they are about to go down. There we go. The first victors of the day. The Macedonians win that battle and move on to the next round. In battle two, we have got the Han Dynasty with the Emperor, Spearman, and the Chuko Nu versus the Sumerian faction with Gilgamesh, Spearman, and these things here that are totally working just as expected. Okay, here we go. Let's see which faction wins battle number two. Also, the Sumerian war carts have gone right down the middle. Well, goodbye, gentlemen. Let's Let's have a look at the rest of the battle. How are these guys doing? How is the Han Chinese Empire? Okay, the Emperor has now joined the battle here. Let's see. Oh, oh, the Emperor's angry or is he dead? I think he's dead. The Sumerian war cart has just been kicked to death. I've got to say, it looks like the Sumerians. In fact, the war cart here is actually working pretty well. Now let's zoom out to get a better understanding of this battle. It's actually pretty well balanced once again. Oh, the war cart is going ham. I think the last war cart is dead. I, I can't really tell. I think it might be possessed. And actually what it looks like is the Sumerian archers are now against the Han Chinese Chokun Cho Cho Nu. Uh, that's how you say it, right? I'm pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. And there we go. That right there was a victory to Sumer. And they move on to the next round. In battle three, we have got the Anglo-Saxons with their spears, shield formations, and archers versus the Scottish medieval faction with their king, stay banners, and of course, the Skiltrum. Okay, let's see how this battle goes, shall we? Okay, wow, the whole Scottish front line is dead. Now I've got to say the Anglo-Saxons have got a lot of shields, which is not gonna be good for the Scots, but this Scottish faction looks so unbelievably good. Okay, that is just one giant body of corpses in the center. The next stage of the battle is about to begin. Is the Scottish king in in combat yet. I don't believe he is. The Scots have got a bunch of archers, but so do the Anglo-Saxons also. Just look at this Scottish faction. Can we just appreciate- Oh, that shield doing its work. Look at this guy. Even the archers have got the blue war paint. If these guys don't win this battle, I'm actually gonna be so sad. You have no idea. Please, guys, don't die. Totally accurate battle simulator at its finest. To tell you what, he's been a really good distraction. He is finally dead, but that's allowed the Scottish archers to kill a few more of these guys. Ooh, it's a small head. This is actually way too close for comfort. This is actually, I don't believe this is about to happen. No! <laughs> Why did they have to lose? It was such a cool faction, but there we go. <sighs> 
the Anglo-Saxons win that battle and move on to the next round. Well, at least you know it's not rigged. In battle four, we have got medieval England with their cavalry, knights, and the king versus the American riot police with a bunch of riot police. This Tabs faction tournament just keeps getting weirder. Wow, that cavalry did a lot of formational damage right there. Let's see who's going to win, plate armor or Kevlar. Can the modern riot police take down swords and shields? I mean, if the battlefield is anything to go by, then the answer might just be no. Some of the cavalry is still alive. Wow, that battle right there did not last very long and of course is an English victory, meaning they move on to the next round. In battle number five, we have Corinth with their spearmen and spear throwers versus the 80 years war Dutch army with musketmen, halberds, and flintlocks. Okay, as per usual, we like to follow the charging units. Let's see how these guys do against the muskets. Wow. Okay, only... Okay, no, no, no. They're all dead. I was gonna say they all survived, but no, as you can see, they did not. Now, the halberd combination with the muskets is gonna be really deadly here and look at the Corinthians getting slaughtered. Let's see how it's going on the other side. In fact, the other side is arguably even worse to them. Yeah, this faction is a strong contender. We've only got a couple of spear throwers left and they go down. Good lord. Yeah, there was quite a few of them left. So, that was a Dutch victory, meaning they go through to the next round. In battle number six, we have got Harold Hadrada's Vikings loading in with Harold Hadrada himself, spearmen, and wolves versus the Dacian army with a ton of swordsmen and some ranged units at the back. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna follow the wolves in. I really want to see what they can do. Okay, I think they all just immediately died on impact. Now, these two factions should be really well balanced, and it's actually quite hard to tell who's won this. Harold Hadrada going in there, come on, send him. But actually, it looks like the Dacians have not only won the center of the battle here with a strong majority, but now look at this. Wow, there is absolutely no hope for those final two units. Look how many spears just landed in him. Yep, I've got to say that was a pretty clean victory for the Dacian army, meaning they move on to the next round. In battle number seven, we've got the Aztec army with their Eagle Warriors, Jaguar Warriors, and Blow Darts versus the Babylonians with what we're going to pretend is a Babylonian wall, as well as Shield Infantry and Nebuchadnezzar himself. Okay, here we go. Let's see how the walls of Babylon do. Okay, they've got some interesting abilities. I'm not going to lie. I don't know what those actually mean. The walls of Babylon have fallen, it would seem. Not that they really ever wear anything. And the Aztecs appear to be pushing through. This is a little bit of a deadlock here though. No team appears to be taking the upper hand and we've just got a pile of corpses in the center of the map here. Although if I was to put my money on either of the teams, yeah Nebuchadnezzar over here has got some sort of ability. It's a shiny thing but I don't know what it does. But the final two units back here for the Aztecs ooh, are now dead. That right there was a Babylonian victory, meaning they go through to the next round. Next up we've got the Teutonic Order with their cavalry and knights versus the pirate faction with their spearmen, musketmen, and surprise, surprise, pirates. Okay, here we go. Let's see what the cavalry can do against all those halberds, if anything. Come on, okay. It looks like it's gone. No way. No way. The battle did not just end that quickly. I'm I'm sorry. I just, I just, okay. We're going to give the victory to the pirates and we'll progress them to the next stage. But I'm just going to quickly reload that battle because I want to see exactly how that just went so badly wrong. Okay. So looking from this perspective, a couple of them get killed by the muskets and the rest of them just get absolutely annihilated by the halberds. And there we go. Okay, the pirate faction seems relatively strong. Moving on. In battle number eight, the post-Marian Roman army with their much-famed Tessudo formation versus the Crusader army with a bunch of medicated cavalry and knights that can't ride them. Okay, here we go. Both teams have got charge units and so they are going to meet in the middle of the battlefield incredibly quickly. It is just one giant punch-up. The medicated horses are down and so far it's 
next to impossible to tell who's actually winning this battle. I'll tell you what, this might just be a really well-balanced battle, but what was that? It looks like the Crusader King might have actually had an ability on him there, and that might have just edged him out the victory. Although I'm not sure what's happening here. These guys are fighting themselves, and he doesn't have a head. Wow, totally accurate battle simulator at its finest. That right there was a Crusader victory, meaning they move on to the next round. So, you're still watching the video. Good. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss episode 2, 3, and 4. And also, as you can see from this table, this Tab's Faction Tournament is a lot of work. Ugh. By liking and commenting on this video, the algorithm will show it to more people. And as you know, more people equals more good. <laughs> All right, back to the tournament. In battle number 10, we have the Welsh Gwynedd faction. Yes, that's definitely how you pronounce that. With their king, spearmen, and archers. Versus the Scottish Jacobite faction. With more spearmen and halberds, as well as swordsmen. Okay, so we have got Scotland versus Wales. Is this going to be the first Scottish faction to go through? Probably not, because for some reason, all of them- Oh my god, I'm sorry, just stop and take a look at that bridge. I've never seen a more messy battle in my life, and I've seen a lot of awful tabs battles. It's anyone best guess who is winning this right now. I swear, honestly, like, the armies can't even fight each- of course, actually, sorry, of course the Scottish faction loses and dies, because that's what they do in every single tabs battle for some reason. At least nobody can claim that I have rigged these battles, because not one, not two, but three Scottish factions have already lost. The Pictish faction, the medieval Scottish faction, and now the Jacobites. So, the Welsh faction wins that battle and moves on to the next round. Next up, we've got the Ottoman Empire with Janissaries, cannons, and armored cavalry versus Palmyra with their spearmen, swordsmen, and archers. Okay, this is going to be interesting. The Ottomans have got a lot of range, and these guys have basically got no shields, so okay, two of them are headless and dead, and then okay then, well this is just them, um, this is just not going very well. The Ottoman main force has not even arrived for the assault, and now that they are here, well okay, Okay, I guess that that battle is uh, is over in a- Oh, we got one last stander there. He survived, you know, uh, a, a good three seconds longer than everyone else. Yep, so can confirm that that was an Ottoman victory. Um, And they're probably going to be quite a strong contender to win the tournament. So they move on to the next round. And in battle number 12, we have got the Incan Empire with their halberds, axemen, and archers versus the Mongolian horde. With you guessing. It. Cavalry and bowmen. Okay, this one could just be interesting because the halberds might be a hard counter to the cavalry. Yep. That looks exactly like what they are. Although, that being said, the Incan formation is an absolute mess, but not many of them are dead over here. And the Mongolians might be down to a couple of spearmen, and then their archers, or bowmen rather, down the back, and even they are now getting picked off by the Incans. Who would have guessed it? Wow, in fact, actually, that was a pretty serious performance from the Incans, with the final kill coming from the shield being hit so hard that the guy's head literally disappeared. So they win the battle and are moving on to the next round. In battle 13, we have got medieval France with their cavalry, swordsmen, and spear formation versus the Danish Vikings with their spearmen, halberds, and big old axes. Okay, let's see what this French cavalry can do. Okay, turns out they can do quite a lot. The horses, as per usual, are dead, but the knights have absolutely, well, they single-handedly destroyed the entire formation. To summarize that, already literally all that's left is archers and so the Danish have been absolutely slaughtered. There's there's no two ways about it. This guy doesn't look particularly fit for battle and he goes down. Wow, that was yet another very, very quick battle. And so that was a French victory, meaning they move on to the next round. Also, I spotted this during the battle setup and I am curious. What have I possibly not found in tabs? What is that? That's... 
That's not a legit tabs unit, is it? Am I being an idiot or 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 not? I don't know. Anyway, moving on to the next battle. Now for battle 14, the Hospitaller Knights with their shields, halberds, and archers versus the ancient goal faction with their ballistas, heavy infantry, and spearmen. Okay, here we go. Now, whenever there is a ballista on the battlefield, we have to follow it in. Okay, oh, that did not go straight. Let's see if his shield stops that. Okay, he's He's literally disappeared. Oh, wow. Wow. That, um, that was really not what I was expecting. But the Hospitaller Knights, the Knights of Malta, now in combat with Ancient Gaul. Who has got the better infantry also? I think we just missed, oh, I think we just missed the second Ballista shot, unfortunately. This is just an actual bloodbath in the center. So many of these factions, although I've got to say, the combo of, like, the black and white and green. This is actually, like, a really nice looking pile of corpses. And we've actually got the, oh, hold on a second, sorry. I heard it. I heard it reloading. We couldn't pause possibly miss this now, could we? Let's see who he turns into. Wow! He literally just made, like, okay, wow, I'm not, I'm really not sure what I'm witnessing right now, I'm not gonna lie. This unit here is still alive, but it's missing a leg, both arms, and its head. But somehow, it is still alive. Is it alive? Okay, yeah, wow. Now it's also missing. What is this? I, I, I'm, I'm really confused what's happened here, but I think we should probably see the rest of the battle. Oh, just in time to watch that guy get absolutely destroyed. How about you, sir? Are you ready for your- Oh, no, it's not gonna be a ballista death, is it? No, it's not. I would have loved a ballista death, but that will do. So, there you go. In some style, the goal faction wins that battle and is moving on to the next round. And for battle number 15, we have got the Russian Revolution, led by Lenin, some unemployed military men, and some armed workers, versus the Japanese Amagiwa clan with spearmen, samurai, and muskets. Let's see what Lenin can do and apparently he's incredibly fast but is he gonna get immediately killed? Yes he is. Can the Russian Revolution stop the Japanese Iwagua clan or however the hell you pronounce it? I gave it my best go. I mean look at this. It's it's looking pretty good for them so far to be honest. Look at these guys. Okay the armored workers. The Russian Revolution. The strongest units. Let's see how long these guys can last for. Ooh I'll tell you what actually they're not doing too badly here. Surprisingly not doing too badly. In fact dare I say they They've just cut through almost all of the Japanese Imu clan. <laughs> I'm just giving up trying to pronounce it. And now look at this. The Japanese are now advancing on what appears to be a couple of now unemployed riflemen from the Russian Revolution as they slowly retreat. Can they take down the riflemen or are they musketmen? Yeah, the musketmen of the Jap- Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Looks like, yeah, they definitely have done that. And down he goes. Wow, turns out rifles beat muskets. Who would have thought. Whose decaying corpse are they shooting at? Oh, they're shooting at the guys that don't have any heads, because of course they are. Turns out there's loads of guys without any heads. Okay, the battle has not ended for quite some time, so I've taken control of one of these units, and I just need to finish off this final corpse. Excuse me, sir. Please die. Ow! Okay. <laughs> Next. Why won't it die? There we go. The battle is over and the Russians have won. Meaning they go through to the next round. And now in battle 16, we have got the Gaelic Averni faction with their shield wall, fanatics and archers versus the Manx Vikings. Yes, that's right even more Vikings, with their swordsmen, berserkers, and archers. Okay, let's start the battle and see, are we going to get another cluster on the bridge here? Let's see, the Gaelic Averni tribe has got their first, and yep, once again, we basically just got one giant backlog here. When the battle's like this, there is literally no way you can possibly commentate it, like what is happening right here. I have absolutely no idea. I would say, I yeah, I would say it looks like there's more red tabs units, which might mean that the Gaelic Averni are winning this battle. In fact, yeah, they are. But there's a bunch of Viking archers down here. Maybe, just maybe, they can turn the tide. I don't know, actually. I've just realized what's happened here. It's actually, it's bugged out a little bit, which is why these guys are gonna stay here, because there will be a dead unit under all those bodies, but they can't get to him. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Okay, they finally got to him, which means the game is not bugged, which is excellent. Now we get to see archers get killed. And as we know, archers are cowards, and so watching them die will be extra enjoyable. Hmm, there we go. I like that one. Come on, get him, get him, get him. He's on his knees. Yes, his head's gone. And let's see
see, is this guy? Yep, there we go. Executed as well. So there you go. That bridge battle was an Averni victory, meaning one of the many Viking factions got knocked out and these guys go through to the next round. Now remember, hit that subscribe button. Do it now. And turn your notifications on so that you don't miss episode 2, 3 and 4. Once again, a huge shout out to everyone who took the time to make these factions. If you want a list of all of the tabs factions in this tournament, you can find them in the description. And also, whilst you're down there, don't forget to comment and like on this video so that we can farm more views. Goodbye.